The steel plow was the only tool that could break the plains. It had been a country of cattlemen here since the Civil War. This new weapon in the farmer's hands cut the prairie grass aside. The plow and the reaper made wheat the king as the new century dawned. But what was going wrong was that the huge and growing demand for wheat as the United States entered the war in Europe in 1917 meant an excessive unleashing of this new technology on a soil vulnerable both to erosion by the incessant winds and to the frequent droughts of this dry interior. Quite simply, a fragile land was being flogged to death. By 1929, an area the size of England was under wheat. It was a technological revolution, but in 1930, nature struck back. As the years of drought set in and the winds swept the plains as they had always done, the failed crops were not able to fix the soil as the tough prairie grasses once did. A nation watched as the plains blew away. New technologists were abandoned by their own land. In one black blizzard, five million tons of soil took to the air over Wichita, Kansas. Another swept from Montana to the Mississippi. stories have grown into the Dust Bowl legends of the death of livestock by the thousands, the closing of railroads and schools, the use of snow plows to clear the dust, of cars sandblasted free of paint, and the exodus of three million people in defeat. It's now known that had they followed a few simple rules about dressing the soil and plowing the land in relation to the direction of the winds, such destruction could have been avoided. The land has recovered, and it survived more recent droughts. The secret has been getting to know this soil, and how to conserve its moisture in this place of infrequent rain. The making of a continent will return on the Discovery Channel.